Hello everybody, how are you today? My name is Harris Heller. I am the owner of the Alpha Gaming Channel, which is the most subscribed to YouTube channel for streamer information. And if you're looking for a video on how to get your Twitch channel or YouTube streaming channel or Facebook channel, whatever, started, uh, this, this is probably the right place because because that's what this is about. One of the most fundamental tools to streaming is your streaming software. The, the application that you use to send your gameplay to whatever streaming platform you're on. And for most people, that software is OBS. It's free, it's open source, which usually means it's not super pretty, but if you can understand the fundamentals of it, it is actually really powerful software that you can do some pretty crazy stuff with. But today, all I'd like to do is spend the next 10 minutes helping you understand OBS just enough that you can go live. And then maybe sprinkle in some fun little tips and advanced tricks that make you look like you know it better than you actually do. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and start by opening up OBS. This is what you're greeted with. I told you it wasn't super pretty, but it is actually prettier than it was when I first started streaming. And I think we should start from the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. Let's take a look at what we're seeing here. All right. This is your canvas. When you start piecing together your stream with your gameplay, your alerts, your camera, your animations, whatever you have on there, that's all going to go here. You're painting your picture perfect stream in this giant black rectangle and the building blocks of that painting are your scenes and sources right over here. Let's talk about sources for a little bit. Every source is an individual element on your stream that makes the big picture. So a source can be your camera, a source can be your gameplay, a source can be uh, your overlay, your artwork. All those little things are separate sources and you add them together with this little add button here and you put them all in here until it paints the picture of the stream that you're looking for. So let's add a couple sources here. The very first most important thing we need to add is our screen here, what we're streaming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna go to display capture. This window will always pop up. We can name it whatever we want. Let's call it display capture. It's gonna look weird because it's capturing OBS, which is capturing OBS, which is capturing OBS. Yeah, this isn't going to do. This is actually going to be a little rough. Let's take this as an opportunity to learn to add something else. So instead, we're going to grab a picture of a screen. We're going to pretend it's our gameplay screen. So we're going to hit the add button. We're going to go to image this time. We're going to call it fake screen just for fun, just so I know what it is. And you can see as soon as I did that, the name fake screen popped up. Now, when you add a new scene, the first thing it does is the properties pop up right here. So you can choose what image we want to put there. Browse, find the image we made. We placed it on the desktop. There it is, screen right there. And there's our picture that we took. You'll notice it's only showing the top left corner. That's because we are dealing with a 1080p screen, but my screen is 4K. So it's actually four times the size. Let's grab this little red corner here and shrink it down a little bit so that it fits. And there we go. You can do the exact same thing when you actually choose display capture, by the way. Now, by the way, if you were trying to actually capture your screen, the way to do that is you have two different monitors and you have OBS on a different monitor and you're capturing your gameplay scene. And that solves the whole problem we had before. I just only have one monitor on this PC. Now you can see we've got one source down here with our fake screen. What do you say we add our camera as well over it? These are the two most important elements of your stream. So we're gonna go in here and my camera is actually going in here via a capture card. So let's find a video capture device, which is what a capture card is considered. We're gonna call this camera. And what we're looking for is the cam link. And there we go. Now I have all the fun little numbers and stuff on the screen here because it helps me with filming the video, the actual footage you're seeing. But normally when you're capturing your camera, you'd actually turn those off in the camera setting. We're gonna hit okay. Now we're going to shrink it down because when we watch our gameplay, we're just going to want our camera to be right over here, not too big. And there we go. We essentially have everything we need for a very minimal stream here. And some people only have this much. You can see we got two sources down here, our screen and our camera. And a little tip for you, by the way, if I move this over here, the order is very important. The one that's on top is on top, you can see if I move the camera underneath the fake screen, look at that. The camera is now underneath the fake screen. Let's move it back on top. 
and that's right where it needs to go. Now let's take a look at what scenes are real quick because you will want to have multiple scenes while you're streaming. And a scene is exactly what it sounds like. Here we'll have what we'll call our gameplay scene, which is where we have our screen nice and big and our camera small in the corner. In fact, let's right click and rename this to gameplay scene. But we wanna add in another one that we wanna use between games. So we'll call it our intermission screen. You can see it selects the intermission screen and everything turns black. Don't worry, your gameplay scene is still there. If we click on it, it pops right back up. But in here, since we're talking to our audience, the gameplay is not really doing anything. We're going to want our camera front and center. So let's go back to video capture device. And we're going to add existing this time instead of creating a new one. And we're going to pull our camera back in. Now we've got our camera nice and big on this scene. But if we go back to our gameplay scene, it's small over here in the corner. So these scenes are almost like folders for multiple sources, however you want to lay them out, right? You can see when I click on intermission, all we have is the camera. Go back to gameplay, both of our sources pop back up. And just for fun, let's bring our gameplay in here, nice and small in the corner. Maybe we want them to still have a little bit of context of what we're looking at so they can see when the next game is about to start. Something like that. And look at that. We are ready to go live with our gameplay scene and our intermission scene. Now, before we move on, I want to teach you a neat little trick. You see, when we're big and full screen like this, I'm framed very well. I've got nice headroom up here. You can see my room. You can see my microphone, my PC. It looks really cool. We get into gameplay and I'm pretty small. In fact, if I wanted to be large enough to interact with my audience, I'd have to blow up my camera to a point where it's covering up almost all of my gameplay. So here's a trick here. If you hold Alt on your keyboard and drag in one of these little resize dots, it'll actually crop it for you. And so I can now crop in the left and right, give it more of a vertical camera shot. There we, go. we don't need much room behind me. Maybe like that. The way I can lean forward, lean back, still be in the shot. That looks pretty good. If we go back to intermission, it doesn't change this camera. That's a little hidden advanced tip for you that not a lot of people know. But let's move on now. Here we have our audio mixer. So if we had any audio devices plugged into this, say a USB microphone or maybe a, an audio interface with an XLR microphone plugged into it, that would appear right here. In fact, if we want, we can hit the plus button and we can add an audio input device. And I can actually add my microphone. My microphone is the broadcast stream mix right here. Now you can see this microphone is being picked up right in the audio mixer. And if I get a little too loud, it shows up in red. And if I'm too quiet, which this is a really fancy microphone, so it's hard for me to get too quiet, but it's gonna show up too low down here. I can turn it up and turn it down. You can see as I turn it down, it gets much lower. Let's bring it back up. The audio portion of OBS is pretty simple as long as you know what is actually capturing your voice and what your computer recognizes it as. Moving over to scene transitions. Now, what this is gonna do for you, it's gonna allow you to control what you want that transition from one scene to the next looks like. Right now, it's set to a 300 millisecond fade. And when I click on intermission, it takes three tenths of a second in a cross fade to switch back and forth. But if I wanna go to cut instead of fade, now it's just a quick cut. There are more than just these two kinds of transitions. All you have to do is add one just like you added a scene. Hit this little plus button. Let's add a swipe transition just for funsies. It's gonna give you the properties for the transition and it's gonna show you an A transitioning to a B scene. So right now, if we hit preview transition, that's what it's gonna look like transitioning between two different scenes. Let's try it. There you go. Just like that. Another advanced tip for you here before we move on. Let's say you have a certain scene that you have a very special transition, but you only want it to happen on that scene. You can right click on one. You can hit transition override. And so I can make it so going to gameplay does a cut, but everything else does a fade. So if I go to intermission, it'll fade to it, but we've overridden gameplay to be a cut. So if I click on gameplay, it's a quick cut. One last thing I want to get to on this main screen before we get into the next section is the scene collection up here. Let's say you've got a nice scene ready for when you're playing your favorite game. Maybe you're playing Among Us. You've got your camera in the right place. You've got your alerts set in the right place. Whatever you have set. Maybe your overlay. You've got a special Among Us overlay. But let's say you also play Minecraft sometimes and, and you want maybe your Minecraft artwork or your Minecraft camera. You like it placed over here. Well, the way to fix that is go to scene collection up here. 
and you can make a new whole scene collection. Kind of like how a scene over here is a group of sources placed a specific way, if I change the scene collection to something different, all of my scenes change to something different as well. Let's go back to Adorama up here and it's gonna bring back everything that we just did. It's kind of neat. And I think you understand all of this right now. So let's move a tiny bit deeper and let's grab the other things that you need to know before you start. And let's jump into your settings, which are right here. Here we have our settings window. We have all the different categories or tabs in your settings. Let's jump into just a couple of them that you will need to touch before you get started. It looks overwhelming. So what I'm going to ask you to do is ignore everything except the couple things that I tell you about. They are not important for you to start, but they're kind of cool to go through later. And I would recommend you do that at some point. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to video. Remember when I said that my canvas was 1080p, but the image we brought in was 4K, which is why it didn't fit. Well, here's where you control not only how large your canvas is, but also the resolution of your stream and the frames per second of your stream. This is where you control what the basics of your stream looks like. So if your PC is maybe not powerful enough to handle 1080p, maybe you want to bring it down to 720p. Or maybe your gaming monitor like mine is 4K and you want to make your resolution 4K, but only stream in 1080p. Well, that's something you can do as well. Downscale filter is something you're not really going to have to touch much. These three are the important ones. I have mine set to 1080p, 1080p, and 60 frames per second. Simple enough, right? Let's move on to the next important one. Let's go up to the stream tab here. This is where you're going to tell OBS where your stream is going to. So the first thing you'll want to do if you're streaming to Twitch, for example, is connect to your Twitch account. It's going to ask you to sign into your Twitch and then you're pretty much done. <laughs> Twitch is integrated right into OBS, so they make it really easy. If you're streaming to Facebook or YouTube, they'll give you something called a stream key. And this is where you'll paste it right here. And that'll essentially do the same thing as signing in. It's just not quite as clean. Once you're signed in, all you have to do is hit start streaming and OBS will send whatever you've got on your canvas to your Twitch account. Let's jump to output. This is where things start to look a little bit more complicated. They're really not. Output is where you really get to fine tune the quality of your stream. Things like how much information you send per second. The higher the bit rate, the more information is being sent and the higher quality your image looks. The encoder is the portion of your computer that's actually doing the processing of your stream. So for example, Nvidia NVENC is my GPU doing the work. X264 is actually my CPU doing the work. If you have an Nvidia GPU, I recommend you use NVENC just because Nvidia GPUs have a specially designed encoder chip that is specifically for encoding a stream or an image like this. Versus if you use your CPU with the X264 setting, your CPU is often trying to do too many things at once, like run your game, render all the things that you've placed on your canvas here. However, using the NVIDIA encoder or NVENC is using a dedicated chip that if you weren't using it, it would be sitting there doing nothing. So it's a much more efficient way to game and stream on a single PC. Those are the two most important thing you need to know, what the encoder is and what the bitrate is. My recommendation is that if you're not a Twitch partner yet, you start this off at 4,500 kilobits per second. The reason for that is if you're not a partner, oftentimes your viewers aren't able to lower the quality of the video itself. And if your bitrate is too high and they don't have a fast enough internet, they might get some buffering. So lowering this down to 4,500 allows your viewers to watch in a much smoother experience. Once you hit partner, the viewer can actually lower the resolution to whatever their internet can handle. So you can make this really as high as you want within Twitch's limits. There are a lot of really cool things in the settings. One of the first things I'd recommend you check out first is hotkeys here. For example, if I want to be able to switch scenes without having to go over with my mouse and click it, I can go to gameplay, make it the number one button here on my number pad on my keyboard, and then go to the intermission scene and make it number two. And now I can use one and two to do that. There are a lot of cool things you can do in hotkeys, a lot of cool things you can do in all the other settings as well. So I recommend you check them out but we got over the important ones that you should know before you get started. And one other thing that's important, remember when we went over scene collection? Well, you can choose profiles as well. And where scene selection jumps back and forth between collections of this stuff, profile goes back and forth between different versions of this stuff. So for example, if you wanna stream on one Twitch account one day, but a different Twitch account another day, you can set up a profile for your main Twitch account and then add another profile 
for your secret Twitch account or whatever you want. That way you don't have to keep signing out and signing in. You can have them both saved to different profiles. The last thing I wanna show you is customizing up your OBS a little bit. All these things you see down here are completely dockable. Meaning I can grab this audio mixer and I can move it to this side if I want. Or I can actually move it and disconnect it from my OBS entirely and have it standing alone or on a different monitor if I wanted. I actually have my chat window on this screen while OBS is on this screen. You can move things to the side like this. Doesn't make a lot of sense for the audio mixer, but you can. Or if there are some that you want access to on your main screen, but you don't use often, you can drag them on top of each other and it gives them little tabs like that. Mess around with your OBS docs. Get rid of some, add some. If you go to view and you go to docs, it's gonna show you all the different things you can do. For example, if you sign into your Twitch account, you can actually add your Twitch chat in here and you'll be able to dock it next to your OBS scene if you'd like. It makes it really easy to jump back and forth between seeing what your stream looks like and talking to your chat. I personally like having stats open. That way I can see if I'm dropping any frames and if I am, is it because my internet's too slow? or is it because my CPU is getting overloaded? And this lets me know all of that stuff. And now I've got my OBS looking the way I'd like it. There is so much more you can do with OBS. For example, you can add filters for extra color correction. You can crop things, you can rotate things. You can even download extra plugins that can make your camera move from the right side of the camera to the left side in real time. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. But what I hope I showed you today is that it's not something to be afraid of. And once you understand the basics, you can set up a stream in just a couple minutes and go live. So Adorama, thanks for having me with you for this video. Guys at home, I hope this helped. And as always, happy streaming.